It's space weather! We've got a lot of tabs open, so let's do this thing. Solar disk, 171 angstroms. Active region, rising to face Earth. Not a sunspot. An additional active region rising over the eastern equatorial region. And we're going to cover the heliosphere current sheet, cosmic rays, and some other stuff. Let's move on. Checking out the 304 angstroms view. We got plasma filaments all over the entire eastern limb. through here are your magnetic lines in 94 angstroms you can see some field density over here and that's basically being covered up by these coronal hole fields Let's look at some more data First of all, the earthquake situation. Go back 10 hours. Vanuatu gets a 5.0 at a depth of 151 kilometers. So Vanuatu should stay on alert for a 5.5. Tonga gets another 5.0 at the surface. Burma gets a 5.0 at 91 kilometers, so they should remain on alert for a similar quake at the surface. Papua New Guinea 4.7, Russia 4.3, Solomon Islands get a 5.4, and that's the last significant quake. Zoom out to show you where it's located, just east of Papua New Guinea, kind of in between New Guinea and Fiji. Let's head to spaceweathernews.com. Actually, before that, let's go look at the real time solar wind. While this loads, can we just say uh, <clears throat> that parts of the US government are closed? However, because the information this site, this site provides is necessary to protect life and property, it will be updated and maintained during the government shutdown. Dear government, you are shut down. And for that, we thank you. Since when you're shut down, you're not really shut down. We welcome government shutdowns. We love them. And every time we have a government shutdown, we celebrate it. Moving on to the solar wind data. BTBZ's had some wild spikes. And now it's pretty much relaxing. Solar wind density is at 5.34 protons per cubic centimeter. And we st we're still seeing kind of a sputtering connection here with the coronal hole. And we are waiting to cross the heliospheric current sheet. It does not appear that the polarity has changed yet. We're going to cover that in a minute. Solar wind speed all the way down to 324. Therefore, solar wind at very low and weak levels. At spaceweathernews.com, we see the X-ray flux actually had a, a further dip in it, even lower than it's been, pretty much less than flatlined. Magnetometer looks like it's reached its bottom for today. And so this is one of the perturbations we expect to see regarding the heliospheric current sheet crossing and the polarity switch. Here's your KP index. It's actually up to two, which is kind of surprising considering how low the solar wind is. Could be a magnetic effect. Let's keep an eye on the KP index. Here's your Cygnets forecast. We'll let that play through once. This is from 1223 through January 2nd. Not so sure this middle pane is correct. 
And we're going to look at some more real time, near real time data in just a minute. You can see the electron flux dip there. That's characterized by coronal hole wind streams usually. We don't really see that this time. Very low levels of electron flux. You can see the trend is actually downward. No charging hazards. And the F2 layer is looking fairly normal here. Um, this, this region here is more charged. And so the charge disparity here should be a little bit less than we've seen in the previous days. Aurora forecasts are basically non-existent, very small, weak auroras. Here's your geos geospace uh, magnetosphere models, complements University of Michigan. You can see the magneto tail still has higher pressure than the bow shock. And this does corroborate the Gong 2 data we're about to look at regarding the magnetic information. It appears that the heliospheric current sheet has not yet been crossed. And let's have a look at those models. All right, so here's the magnetic model. This is 1223 through current time. You can see we have not yet crossed the, magnetic, the heliospheric current sheet. The green versus red are opposite polarities. And you can see this rift here. We're not through the rift yet. And at that point, there's going to be a magnetic connection to the opposite pole of the sun. So that's something to await. That should cause spikes in the magnetometer as well as, uh, you know, increased earthquake risk and all that. It's associated with it. Oh, and by the way, we were incorrect yesterday. We thought this crossing was already occurring. However, this, this portion of the current sheet appears to be fanning out, delaying that crossing. Let's go to an article in Cosmos Magazine. Cosmic rays lead to pyramid discovery. There's a new void been found in the pyramid. The Great Pyramid of Khufu, that is. Above the Grand Gallery, there's a mysterious chamber in there. That somebody discovered by using cosmic ray uh, nuclear nuclear film, nuclear emulsion film, which was positioned in the Queen's Chamber. And so anyway, we'll leave links to that new chamber discovered in the pyramid. Nobody knows what it's for. No surprise there. Cool article. We'll leave you links to this also. Great site for cosmic ray sources. Some of the links are dead. We use this daily. We just like to show everybody. First, we'll look at Athens. Cosmic ray monitor. This is a neutron monitor. They are experiencing some spikes. And yesterday, actually on Christmas, Athens, Athens recorded the highest cosmic ray uh, the high, the highest cosmic ray, uh, what do you call it, density since since early December. Here's the Mexico neutron monitor, cosmic ray in general monitor. Not really agreeing with Athens. Let's go to Olu. Olu's cosmic ray monitor actually has lower levels than the rest. Also, I'd like to cite that cosmic ray levels are currently not as high as they were around 2009 to 2010. That's why we monitor them so closely as they are a proxy for solar activity or really for inactivity. Lastly, let's look at Moscow. Moscow has some pretty much some transient spikes there recently although not as high as on Christmas Eve and early Christmas Day cosmic rays also affect Earth's atmospheric processes very important to cloud nucleation we'll leave links to this article also 
This article has a whole bunch of other articles talking about how cosmic rays affect the atmosphere. Clouds form on ionization paths, the same way as things like stars and galaxies, and the same condensation reactions that cause astronomical features to form cause clouds to form on Earth. Cosmic rays cause increased cloud nucleation. Increased cloud nucleation causes increased albedo effect. Increased albedo effect causes more radiation to bounce back into space, which makes the planet cooler, not warmer. Next, here's an article on everypedia.org about human health threats from cosmic rays. We're not going to totally get into it, but basically on KP0 days, and again, we're at KP2 today, but when KP0, you're going to get higher levels of cosmic rays due to lack of magnetospheric shielding by the Earth. Everything from heart attacks to strokes to just general insanity. People drive worse on KP zero days. So that's part of the reason why we monitor it. We'll leave links to that article as well. Lastly, let's look at some more near real-time data. Thanks to the Gong 2. Looking at the heliosphere from a magnetic perspective. This is the same run here. Uh, 1223 through current time. I think part of the reason why we haven't crossed into the other polarity yet is because this active region is basically holding back the incoming field. It's very hard to tell because you can't see fields behind other fields, but we're still awaiting the crossing of that heliospheric current sheet. Let's go back just one more time to look at that initial view that we showed you. The zenith view. And again, keep in mind the red and green are the two opposite polar, polar fields of the sun. Negative charge and positive charge. Now, if you look at the end of this video, right in this area, you can see those field lines start to kind of vibrate right in this area. It's because they're just about to snap to connection. So if you watch this throughout the day, you'll be able to see the exact moment. But as you're able to pull any piece of data, um, you won't miss out. Let's just show you again uh, what happened on on or around 11.11. Pardon the orientation here. We're going to show you a little run from 11.11 .11 to 11.15, let's say. This will be a short run, but you'll see some real perturbations. All right, let's just let that play. This is November 11th through November 15th. And that is what happens when the heliosphere gets very strange, magnetically speaking. So, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Congratulations, Anomalous Howard. Close things out. Looking at the sun at 193 angstroms. How about a full screen? And there you have it. Remember, when you're waiting to cross the heliospheric current sheet, don't drink. And if you drink, don't drive. Because nobody wants to see you on the road.